Hi, I'm Tracy Watts. Welcome to Mercer Health News. Our topic today is our latest research on affordability. And I'm here with Beth Umland, who leads research for our health and benefits business. Hi, Beth. Hi, Tracy. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Thank you so much for joining me today. So, Beth, the 2024 decisions, they're already made. And pretty soon, it's going to be time to start planning for 2025. And in conversations that I'm having with clients, they are very worried about cost increases. Will you please just share with us what is going on with cost trends? Sure. Yes, I am not surprised that's what you're hearing because that's what the data is showing us as well. Um, this year, uh, cost growth accelerated um, to over 5%, uh, ending kind of a nice 12-year uh, cycle of cost increases averaging around 3%. And employers are looking at a, another uh, increase of 5% or higher for next year as well. So what is going on? Well, I think, you know, you don't have to look too far to find the culprit. Um, inflation reached historic levels last year. In fact, we were kind of surprised not to see a sharper increase last year. But it takes a little bit of a while for those to work through the, uh, you know, the contract renewal cycle. Most um, providers and health plans are on three-year contracts. So as those come up for renewal, we're seeing, you know, the higher prices that are, you know, driven by higher wages and the higher cost of medical supply coming through um, as higher prices. And, you know, that's going to go on for a, a few years as that works its way through the system. And of course, it's not just inflation. You know, there are other big changes going on in the healthcare environment. And one of them is really what's going on with prescription drugs. I mean, this year we saw an increase in prescription drugs of almost 9%. So that is really driving total health benefit cost. Yeah, you know, um, I think that inflation is definitely the culprit. I'm not so sure that providers got everything that they needed in this round of negotiation. So I would kind of just cautious everyone that this might just be the beginning that it, that 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 might actually be have a longer um, life to it than than what we're thinking. But you know, the other thing too that I think is really interesting is that. You know, during the pandemic, we really focused on employee-centric benefits. Everything was all about the employees, how to take care of them, how to keep them happy. And, you know, and it was nice because we weren't facing these really big increases. And now that we are, you know, switching back to our affordability topic, um, you know, this is, this, is, this is real. Like this affordability issue is real. How are you seeing that show up in our data? Well, absolutely to your point, employers really have been avoiding um, shifting more health plan costs to employees for the, really the past you know four or five years. And this year, it was like absolutely flat. I mean, we saw virtually no increases in um, cost sharing features like deductibles. I think the PPO in network deductible average rose by two dollars. Um, no increases in copays or or out of pocket maximums. And even um, the premium contribution uh, was essentially, you know, very minimal increases, just really tracking with the growth in health plan cost. Um, last year, the em employee share was 22% of plan costs. This year, it's 22% of plan costs. So um, em employers are really looking to avoid um, increasing financial responsibility for health care for their employees. And they, they also were taking some more you know, proactive steps to actually really try to help the lower paid employees especially. Um, we saw employers adding uh, medical plan choices where there's you know free coverage for uh, employee only coverage. They are providing a medical plan option with no deductible or a low deductible. So really sort of focusing on um, their lower paid employees and providing a medical plan option that would work better for them. Yeah, you know, the um, the free medical plan option, that's something that we saw show up a lot in some recruiting ads. And of course, it was just for one plan and it was just for employee only coverage. But I do think it was very effective from a recruiting perspective. And I do think that that is a benefit that was attractive to a fair number of people. And so um, it'll be interesting to see if we see that percentage grow next year and in the year after. Well, uh, it's also obvious why employers are worried about affordability. And, you know, Tracy, you've probably seen the results to our latest um, employee survey inside Employee Minds, where we actually go to the employees and get their, you know, uh, ask for their perspective on this. And 
you know, the the uh, results around affordability were a little, you know, sobering. Um, we asked the question, you know, can you and your family afford the health care you need without financial hardship? And for 25 percent of the respondents, the answer was no. And it really, you know, it, it was the lower paid folks who were the ones who um, were most likely to be struggling, obviously. I mean, when you looked at those with uh, salaries of 100000 or more, they can afford health care. But down in the lowest income bracket that we looked at, you know, $30,000 a year or below, you know, fully half, you know, say they cannot afford the health care they need without financial hardship. And so, you know, for those folks who, you know, are also dealing with, uh, you know, concerns about, you know, just making, meeting their monthly expenses, that was another question we asked. It's not surprising that if you're having trouble meeting your monthly expenses, that a health care expense is really going to um, be quite a burden. Yeah. And, you know, um, kind of circling back to that, really the challenge to employers is going to be, how do we continue to do this to keep everything affordable with these rising health care costs? And, um, you know, I, I the thing that I always start with, um, with clients is just, you know, how can you optimize what you have today? Um, are you getting the best deal? Are you getting um, everything that you had hoped from your programs? What can you do to get more out of your programs with what you're spending today? Those types of things. And then, of course, you mentioned the biggest driver of trend right now is pharmacy. And um, going out on a limb here to, to predict that the new GLP-1 drugs are probably going to be that biggest driver of the increase in pharmacy just based on what we've seen so far this year with um, experience looking at um, the use of those drugs and cost of those drugs for, you know, first half of this year versus last year. So we still have to get in the rest of the data. But, um, you know, just a lot of activity there. Uh, what are we seeing in the survey in terms of, you know, are, are employers looking at these alternative networks? Yes. Um, I think there was definitely a pause in that. You know, we didn't see during the pandemic years, we didn't really see much growth around alternative networks at all. But we're definitely seeing employers at least saying, you know, we are interested in this. This is going to be a strategy that we're going to be looking at over the next few years, especially among the largest employers. Yeah, I would say hurry up and get on that strategy, because I do think that there is um, savings to be had there. I know it's so hard to do it because everybody wants, you know, as many providers as they can possibly have in network. But you and I know from from data that we've looked at that if you focus on the high quality providers and you really focus on, you know, how do you get people to the right care at the right place at the right time, that does pay off um, both in terms of savings and in terms of outcomes. And so, you know, anything, any strategies that you can do that will intensify that, whether it's navigation or advocacy, um, alternate networks, um, leveraging virtual care, you know, all of those things can work together to really drive that better outcome. Yeah. And this is going to be, you know, a, a key part of, you know, getting back to affordability. You know, if employers are being hit with these super high increases year after year after year, that is going to, you know, impact um, employee compensation and, you know, healthcare affordability does not exist in a vacuum. You know, if, if, uh, you, it, it's part of the overall financial picture. And so managing your healthcare cost, you know, that frees up money for penny increases. So Beth, on that, on that topic of the overall picture of things, you know, you are the, the keeper and the driver of all of Mercer's research. And so my question to you is, um, of all of our research, you know, what keeps you optimistic about where we're headed? Well, this latest employee survey where we surveyed, you know, over 4,000 U.S. employees, um, the, a, a surprise, a welcome surprise finding from that is that employees are actually feeling better about their jobs, better about work-life balance. So there were, there were a number of sort of positives that came out of the results relative to the last couple of years, which have been pretty uh, dark. Um, and, and I think, you know, that is not unrelated to the fact that employers, as you said earlier, have really been focusing on employee well-being. You know, they, they actually have been, you know, raising pay. They have been putting in, um, you know, more wellness type resources. Um, certainly uh, time off benefits have gotten richer. 
and there is just a lot more flexibility in terms of work from home, hybrid working arrangements. So all of that seems to have, um, you know, uh, resulted in employees feeling better about their jobs. A key metric there is that, uh, you know, the trend on are you thinking about where we ask, are you thinking about leaving your your employer? I mean, that has turned and, and is starting to go uh, down. So I, I think, you know, employers can give themselves a pat on the back. It's kind of good to know that when you make employees your focus, you can really make a difference for both the employees themselves and for the organization. Well, I think that's great advice. So keep the focus on employees. We know you're going to be faced with big, um, with potentially big increases in your health care costs, but we still think that there are a lot of things that you can do to manage that so that you can address affordability and keep that focus on employees. So Beth, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks, Josie.